Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Beloved, let us prepare ourselves on this Saturday of the third week of Lent to celebrate the sacred mysteries, calling to mind our sins, but with a renewed sense of hope and confidence in the mercy and love of God, let us ask and seek for His healing, His forgiveness. Son of God and Son of the Virgin, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie eleison, Prince of Peace and Descendant of David, Christe eleison, Christe, Christe, Christe eleison. Light of truth and mercy for sinners, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal Mysteries, we may gladden, we may be gladdened by their full effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever 
and ever. And beloved, know that this Mass is being offered for all of you living and deceased members of this community of Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Bell Chase, but also throughout the world as you are joining us through the World Wide Web. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord, as certain as the dawn is his coming, and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like the rain, like spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this reason I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness, by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocaust. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. 
One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithe on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, today, as the readings invite us to consider what God desires most, as Hosea, the prophet, tells us, it is love that I desire, not sacrifice. And then that first reading, it also speaks to us about Ephraim and Judah, how their works or like the cloud or the vapor, the mist that we see and the morning fog that descends. And when, once the sun comes out, it's, it's gone. It vanishes like it was never there to begin with. Given us pause to consider the practices that we have embraced for this Lenten season. Maybe you have fast or you're fasting from binging uh, on, on Netflix, one of your favorite uh, series. Perhaps, perhaps it is um, giving up uh, that food or that drink that we tend to overindulge in. And it could also be attending daily Mass, praying through the Mass, praying the Rosary, the Chaplet of Mercy, whatever. You've taken up some practice for the Lenten season. But then, is it not true that when Easter comes, all of that goes away, like a vapor, as if it was never there to begin with. The Lord is calling you and I to consider the types of disciplines as regards prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, to speak to the reality of our lives, how we lead our lives, how we come to the Lord who thirst, he hungers, he desires for us. How often we go to Mass saying, oh, it's my obligation. Why not think of it as this? It's God's desire for us because he can't get enough of us. He wants more of us. Could anything be more revealing, be more affirming that, that the, our God, who always was, is and ever shall be, and who has definitively revealed to the entire world his heart, his desire in the person of Jesus the Christ. He wants more than anything else communion with us. That is salvation. And a brief word about today's gospel. The Pharisee he is there, and Luke presents us with it in such a way. He is basically praying to himself. He's talking to himself. And yet, what do we discover? He's doing all of the right things. Paying tithes, fasting twice a week, uh, giving alms, all of these things. He's doing all of the right things. But in so doing, those things He's fallen into the deadliest trap of all, that of pride, that of pride. 
we pray that we would listen to these words of the gospel and consider that the truly humble person is the person who recognizes that they have a unique role in this life, in the course of this life, to make a contribution that they alone can make. And they are also aware that that is true of every other human being in the world. And so when we go to pray with a humble disposition, not comparing ourselves to no one else, but coming as we are truly with hearts contrite and humbled, some of us may go to prayer and sit before the Lord in silence just to be with him, realizing and considering he knows everything that's in my heart. He knows my needs. Some of us may go into prayer speaking to the Lord about our hopes, our needs, our frustrations, our sorrows, even our anger. All of these options are on the table. This is a relationship we have with the Lord. It's personal, it's intimate. If we can't disclose these things, which God is fully aware of, now more than ever, as the, the person of Jesus Christ embraced every experience the human person can endure and has to con be conf is confronted by in this world as we know it, a world gone wrong in sin, we must realize that the most important step of all when going to prayer, in whatever posture we take, whatever means, whatever mode we use to communicate ourselves, the first and most important step is to go with a head bowed down to our Heavenly Father who desires to crown us with forgiveness and love. God love you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. with humble spirit and contrite hearts. May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Beloved, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, by whose grace it comes to pass that we may approach your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handing them on, we may offer you fitting homage through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name, he himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, Celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. 
For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Anus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, Qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Beloved, for those who may not at this time be able to receive our Lord in Holy Communion sacramentally, we offer the following prayer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee that with thy saints and angels I may praise thee for ever and ever. Amen. The tax collector stood at a distance, beating his breast and saying, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us pray. May we truly reveal, O merciful God, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us, and may we always partake of them with abundant faith in our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Hold out to your faithful people, Lord, the right hand of heavenly assistance, that they may seek you with all their heart and merit the granting of what they ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Thanks. Beloved, go forth. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble, be with me, Lord, I pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, 
we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.